In July of 2017, I arrived at a well-known Orlando resort for a conference, and I stepped right into a hive of construction. Although I passed a number of bellmen and hotel employees, I was not directed through the construction area, nor was I greeted with any hellos or smiles. When I finally found the lengthy check-in line, the other guests were quick to let me know that it wasn't moving at all. As one woman left the reception desk, she looked back and said, Good luck getting a room. Nothing seems to be ready. After about 20 minutes, it was finally my turn. And as I approached the desk, I glanced at the clerk's name badge. It read, My name is Ed. My passion is hiking. His perfect skin and well-groomed hair were overpowered by his perfect plastic smile. Ed the Boy Scout, I thought. I guess I picked a busy time, I said, returning his smile. Yes, he replied, looking even more strained, and none of the rooms are ready. He checked me in and said that they would call when I could get my room. He directed me to the bell desk, where I could deposit my luggage alongside everyone else's. Jose, whose passion is motorcycles, spoke through a tight smile advising me to leave my bags and adding, we would be happy to bring them to your room when you get one. He spoke politely, but his smile failed to mask the stress in his eyes. As he addressed me, he glanced back and forth at the growing mountain of bags in his booth. Just 30 minutes into my arrival, and I was able to predict the level of service that I would be receiving over the next five days. I went to the restaurant to have a drink while I waited for my room. A manager welcomed me and then stomped over to a waitress and snarled, You have someone at table seven. The shift in his body language and vocal turn was so drastic that it seemed like the manager had changed from Dr. Jekyll to Mr. Hyde during the 15-foot walk from my table to the waitress station. When the waitress approached me, I instantly realized that her bubbly, warm personality was the opposite of everyone else that I had met at the hotel. I smiled and said, I'll have a cup of coffee, so long as you don't have a mood swing like your boss. She laughed and said, You look exhausted. You must have just flown in. How about a triple espresso? We got along just fine. I do not remember her name tag or her passion. I only remember her cheerful demeanor. She seemed out of place. Neither Ed, the desk clerk, nor Jose, the bellman, were uncaring people. They just had defaulted to a robotic stance under a set of rules that left no room for them to be themselves. It was as if management thought that giving them a name tag that stated their personal passion would be sufficient motivation for them to demonstrate passion for their work. They were all doing the best that they could under the circumstances. As my waitress delivered a second triple espresso, I admired her personal desire to be kind. She was the first employee I had encountered whose words did not seem pre-programmed. Her ability to snap back from management scolding and walk over to me and treat me with warmth made her one of those employees that management could point to and say, Look, if she can do it, so can you. But that is not effective management. There are exceptions to every situation, and some people are just more capable of operating under adverse circumstances. She is an anomaly, and management tends to underestimate the personal effort that someone in her situation exerts to be cheerful and welcoming. Despite their efforts, the individual demeanors of most of the staff indicated that whatever passion was printed on the name tag certainly didn't carry over to their jobs. They did not seem to have passion for anything having to do with their work. I assume the passion listed on the name badge was intended to be a conversation starter, a way of personalizing the employee and opening them up to conversation with the guests. Sadly, Someone who is just going through the motions and clearly doesn't feel good about what they are doing isn't someone with whom I'd want to share stories about hiking or motorcycles.